All right, everybody, welcome back to the TV program. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Shape Changers, book number one in the Che Su Lee Chronicles by Jennifer Robertson. This book came out in 1984. In fact, this was her first ever published novel when she was pretty young, right out of college. Um, and there are eight books in the series, and we will talk about those in a second. But let's talk about the cover. Because um, you know I love graphic design and I love cover illustration, and this is a DAW book, and DAW books always does well. And I like the scroll work that's around the edges, framing our main illustration. Our main illustration is by a, an artist named Julek Heller, and it wraps around great. It's got the same scroll work. And then each of the novels follows that theme with the scroll work. And um, I don't know if Julek Heller did every cover in these first four. Um... Well, when I re review these books, we'll figure out who these cover artists are. I think that's it's a there's, I think each book might have a different cover artist because some of them are vastly different than the others, but they all hold the similar theme of the scroll work. That's a Jody Lee painting right there. I can tell just by looking at it, but it's got the scroll work. So the whole series, the whole eight volume series looks really nice on the shelf because all the spines match they've all got this great look to them so we'll put them all back right here so da books gets an a plus for um making all the spines match and making the covers look dope and if you can't get all eight books and if you want to get them, because they're now they're hard to find. A lot of them are out of print. However, Da Books also makes them available in these modern day omnibuses where they've shrunk the eight book series into four books. In other words, two books per omnibus. So this book one is, is an omnibus of the first two books in the series with great covers done by Yvonne Gilbert. So if you'd rather get the series in this format, two books a piece, it's going to be a little cheaper for you. And it also looks just really nice. And all the books match perfectly together. And they take up slightly less space on your shelf by, you know, about an inch. Anyway, let's talk about Shape Changers. Let's talk about this book number one. So, Chronicles of the Chase Suli. Um, it's about shape changers, really. I mean, you know what shape changers are. So, yeah, the the Chase Suli are a race of uh, people in a medieval world that can change form into, you know, they're they're, they're it's called a leer. Um, the the uh, Chesu Lee are sort of described as these dark-skinned, dark-haired, sort of uh, tent-dwelling people that, um, that sort of bond themselves to a leer or another animal. And so usually it's a hawk or a cat, like a wild cat or a wolf or something ferocious and badass. Um, and it's got kind of like a real like Native American... Um, sort of feel to their culture you know they've got the totems they worship the animals and i know that um jennifer robertson herself has a degree in medieval history or something like that like a master's or a phd i can't remember but i also know since i'm friends with her on facebook that she does a lot of work with horses and dog shows and dog training and dog adoptions she's just really into animals and so the fact that her first book incorporates shape changers that change into animals is pretty apropos i mean she knows her stuff and uh, you can tell she's passionate about this subject of the animals and uh, she treats all of it all the time with grace and compassion and heroism so if you like 
books about animal companions or people that can change into animals or see through the eyes of wolves. I know that's a trope in fantasy, but uh, she was actually probably the first one to do it. Let's just be straight. Okay, so Alex is our main character. She is sort of the um, bastard child of one of the Homana and one of the Chesuli. Two different separate races that sort of battle against each other. And the um, she is sort of out just to, at the beginning of this, she's sort of a, doing a secret rendezvous with a fellow named Carolyn. Now, um, there's uh, also uh, Finn and Duncan. So there's three main characters in this book. Um, Finn, Duncan, and Carolyn. And, and it's sort of like, you know, most books have like a love triangle. I don't know what it is when there's four people involved. Uh, Alex and her suitors. Uh, Finn is a chase Lee. He is uh, bonded or Lear. His Lear is a wolf. Um, uh, prin the, the, the Carillon is the Prince of Homana. So those two conflict. And then there's Duncan also. And um, it's just a book about uh, those characters sort of coming to grips with Alex is discovering that she's sort of this um, bastard child sort of mix between the two races. She's got to figure out her magic, what it is. You know, because up to this point, only men can leer or bond with um, one of these animals. Now, if one of their animals dies, they have to, it's kind of like they do this... Uh, Japanese sepulchre, you know, like this ritual suicide, like if their animal dies, they actually take it seriously enough that they will actually commit suicide. Now, in book one, only the um, men, Chase Uli, can bond with the animals. Um, the world building, I will admit, the world building in book one, and I have read all of these, and I'm going to be rereading them for the channel. Um, I do recall book one being um, one of my least... Uh, I don't want to say favorite because I liked it. Um, it's just there. Some of these other books really stood out to me a lot more as far as just action, adventure, and world building. The world building is a bit a bit uh, sparse in this. Uh, uh, you can get a little bit lost in uh, like not knowing exactly what sort of landscape you're always in. Um, but the world building certainly picks up in later volumes and we get a lot more of the, which may or may not have been done on purpose. I don't know, but I do know by the end of book eight, you will know this world inside and out. That's all I got to say. So there are some, leave it, I mean, the, the mystery, the mystery. I mean, you can't discount that. The mis mysterious factor of not really knowing everything about this world. And you can discover it as you go through the books. It's brilliant. Brilliant. I give book number one in the Chronicles of the Chase Uli, Shape Changers, I give it a good seven out of ten. Knowing that there are better books to come, and this was a great introduction to the series, um, I will tell you what I do remember of these books is each one can be read as a standalone novel. Now, they all have interlinking characters, and it's generational, so the characters in this book are going to be 10 to 20 years older in book two, and thus, you know, and so it's a, the, the time frame spans, if I remember correctly, a couple hundred, 300 years of generations of people, but each one can be read as a standalone. However, I suggest reading them in order just because, you know, you can follow these um characters as they get older and sort of you know which ones die off of old age which ones die off because they got killed it's an interesting way to read it anyway that's my review of this